And um, the Board of Trustees came up with this great idea, I think, at the November meeting to share stories about houses in Winona. And I thought it was great. There's a lot of houses I'd like to hear about. Um, but I think this beckons the question, why did the Board of Trustees pick this house for the world premiere? Uh, um, unfortunately, I can't take any credit for this idea because I was, I missed the meeting it was away in South America. That's very so, good. So, it's a kind of punch on it. But I, I rationalized first that this may, our house may be the only house in Winona that has stayed in the same family from day one. And also, I think the board knew we had some, some neat old documents to share on the house when it was built. Um, but as Elaine said, I think, <coughs> thinking further, I think the real reason, because I was away in South America. <laughs> <laughs> but we're glad to get this story. Um, and share the story of our house, I'm going to start out and give the history part of the house. And since Sue really made all the decisions during the design part, <laughs> we're going to let her explain the improvements that were made. Uh, the story starts with, with these two folks, Samuel and Anna Jordan. They were my great-grandparents. They moved from Salem County to Winona in the the end of the 19th century. Um, they moved here with three teenage daughters, Ada, Olive, and Ellen. They rented no fewer than two houses. We know this, we have the newspaper clippings that said the Jordans moved into this house, moved into this house. I think one of the houses was on Mantua Avenue. The other was on West Avenue. Of course, at that time there were no street numbers, so we don't really know where, where they were. But um, anyhow, they moved. <coughs> Somewhere um, between 1895 and 1904, became renters in Winona. In 1903, they decided they wanted to be an owner of a house. And this map is actually a map of Winona that was produced by the Natural Land and Improvement Company for a land sale in 1900. And unfortunately for the Georgians, the lot they liked wasn't sold in 1900. It was still available in 1903. That lot was on the corner. This is Clinton Avenue, Willow Street. It was on the northwest corner of that, those two street, that intersection. This is the actual deed for the sale. They bought the house from one of Winona's founding fathers, Thomas Sinat. Um, the lot cost $700. Uh, it did come with some stipulations um, that were placed in the deed. All the property that the Mantra Land Improvements Company <coughs> sold to the new owners had some restrictions, and they were passed on from the first deed to the second deed. So Thomas Knott's deed with the, the land company had these stipulations, and those stipulations were you couldn't brew or sell <laughs> alcoholic beverages in the house. You couldn't run a nasty business in your house. And I think some of the folks were around when the pig farm from Cartel Road. Well, this kept them out of Winona. Um, no dwelling. You had to set it back to the street by 17 feet at the time. Um, and this was kind of surprising to me. They actually mandated that you maintain shade trees between the house and the street. So it's kind of a precursor to shade tree city, USA. And um, that's, that's where it started. And also, um, to keep the quality of the houses to the expectations of the land company, they stipulated that it had cost at least $2,500. Which wouldn't be a problem now. <laughs> Back then, it was sure that it was going to be a, a nice house. In November of 1903, after they had purchased the land from Sanat, they hired an architect 
<coughs> this is an actual letter. And I have copied some of these documents if you want to look at them after the talk. But this is an actual letter to Samuel Jordan from the architect. Um, lost a few foot places in here, but you can still read it. The total architectural fee was $175, and conveniently was made uh, with a $75 deposit, dollar deposit and then monthly payments. Um, this is part of the original blueprints. We have sets of blueprints, and actually for that $175, the architect produced two sets of blueprints for two different alternatives. Design varied a little bit from, from one to the other. The architect was Isaac Purcell. Some of you may have heard of him. He was, um, he was a partner in a prominent architectural firm in Philadelphia. Most of Purcell's work were Gothic type churches in the Philadelphia, South Jersey area. In fact, Purcell designed the Memorial Presbyterian Church, as one of his churches. He actually moved to Winona. Um, I think in the early 1900s, he lived at the corner of Willow and Princeton, um, on the southeast corner where the, the Hungerfords and the Vox lived. It used to be a Tudor house when he lived there. Um, and he passed away while living in Winona and he's buried in Winona Cemetery. Okay. In December of 1904, the house was completed. I think that previous day well was March 1904. So they built the house in nine months. Um, this is a copy of the re release of liens where all the, con the contractor and all suppliers and subcontractors signed off and said, um, you know, they're not going to file a lien against the Samuel Jordan. This was what the house looked like when the Jordan moved in. This is actually taken from a postcard dated 1904. The neighbors at the time when Jordan's moved in, right across the street was the, at that time, the Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, Caddy Corner was Stephen Green's house. He was another one of Winona's founding fathers. Next block down, right across from the park, was the Renona Military Academy, which had opened about three months before the Jordans moved into their new house. Since 1904 to 2003, really I don't think a whole lot's changed. Now I do have some family fact checkers <coughs> in the audience, so they might tend to be quiet now. But, um, <laughs> I know the coal was replaced by oil. I think that happened everywhere. Um, the dining room and pantry of the house were converted to a bedroom and a bathroom. When folks aged in the house, they had difficulty getting up the stairs. So it was convenient to stay on the first floor. The electrical service was upgraded. I know when I was here, in probably in the 70s or even the 80s, before the Todds moved into the house, I remember there were two, two fuses, uh, two 15-amp fuses, which powered the entire house. There weren't any appliances. All the appliances in the house were a gas oven, a gas refrigerator, um, and a ringer washer. And there might have been an electrical can opener. <laughs> That's it. They really didn't need the power. Um, the outside color, the exterior color, changed one time. It was white when it was built and stayed white until the 80s. But there wasn't much change in the exterior appearance. I think those shutters fell off and, and so forth. So it started with shutters, didn't have shutters by the 80s. And the refrigerator was changed from gas to electrical. Because couldn't find any gas refrigerators. <laughs> That's really the reason. <laughs> uh, this is a timeline. Between 1904 and 2003, 19 different people lived in 110 South Clinton. Each of these lines represents the duration when an individual lived in the house. So we'll start, I'll point out a few things. We'll start, the Jordans moved in in 1904. There were five of them. 
two parents and three teenage daughters. A year later, Samuel's Jordan's sister, Rebecca Jordan, joined the five of them. So there were six living in the house. In 1917, the oldest daughter, um, Ada, married Fred Smith. So the Smiths finally got into the house. Um, Fred had two daughters from a previous marriage. So there were now, um, I guess, five kids. Well, they didn't marry, she wouldn't get anymore, so four kids. In 1918 and 1920, the Fred and Ada Smith had two sons. One was Larry Smith, my father, and the other was Orville Smith, my uncle. And they were both actually born, physically born in the house. So that's two more people. 1921 to 1928, I don't know if this is capacity, but there were 10 people <laughs> living in that house for over five years. So it was pretty crowded. Which one bathroom? Yeah, to say how many bathrooms. One bathroom. <laughs> one bathroom. It was a small one, too. Really a small kitchen. Um, in 1940, my father married Helen Wilkins from Woodbury. And, of course, Larry Smith was already there, but Helen moved in in 1940 after the wedding, stayed there until after World War II. <clears throat> and when he actually purchased another house and went on it at 100 South Jefferson, out there. And my father passed away in 1961 while we were in California. So my mother picked up family and moved back to Winona. So for a brief period, there was a lot of us. We were in the house until we found a house at Six South Jefferson and moved there. In 1983, my sister, Linda, Todd, and Kevin brought their family from, from West Virginia, and they moved into the house. So there was um, the Todd's moved in, five of them. But at that time, the only other person in there was Orville Smith. So it wasn't that crowd, it was six, but there were three, three kids. 2003, Orville Smith died. Um, you can see he lived in the house a long time. I think he lived in it, potentially lived in his entire life over 80 years. And when he died, the house was vacant. He had lived by himself for 15 years or so. In addition, Orville Smith, eight others died while they were living in the house. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> so, um, so we had, Sue and I had the opportunity to keep the house and the family, um, but we had to move from Dallas to Winona. And um, we lived in Dallas for 32 years. So we did our thought process. Let's look at the pros and cons. <laughs> Top. The electrical light there. 
But I'm just going to plug in the plugged in. Yeah. If you use a plug, you plug it into the light fixture. Oh my so God. God. <laughs> so you know there is we had, we had basic needs, but there was a lot of work that was going to be required. So our process, really typical process, we had to find an architect, design the improvements, select a contractor, and then go to work constructing the improvements. <coughs> so we were still in Texas at this time. So I found a copy of the Yellow Pages when they used to have the Yellow Pages. I took it back to Texas. I wrote a letter to every architect in the book in South Jersey. I think there were 20 or 30 saying, hey, we got this old house. We want to fix it up. You know, it's going to cost a lot of money. Are you interested? And my engineering background, I immediately put together an Excel spreadsheet. So I prepared all the responses. But one person responded. <laughs> So I, I didn't need the spreadsheet. I think you hired me. And, and went to work with design. <laughs> Give you an idea what was retained, what we, we kept when we did the work. Found stone foundation, we used that. Um, kept the, the framing, at least the exterior framing, and the outdoors, and the exterior siding. We try to save doors and trim. You know, there's a lot of nice chestnut trim work. We save that and use as much as possible. Um, we retain the pine floor on the second floor. We kept the one. There's a clawfoot tub. We kept that. And there was the original sink. We kept that. Some furnishings we kept, and one light fixture. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't the entire light fixture. It was just the globe. Uh, <laughs> so that's what we kept. What we, what was new, everything else is new. I mean, the place was good. And um, so we started a little bit about the design first. And I'm gonna let Sue talk, because again, she, she did the design. My job was to, using my engineering background, I could do things to draw elevation and so forth to scale, so she can figure out whether it really would it look good. <laughs> And I cut a whole lot of paper dolls, <laughs> I think, to, to scale for, I think, every furnishing we had in Texas. Every piece of furniture, rugs, everything. And I think all the furnishing we anticipated buying for the next 20 years. So we can decide if they fit into the, her design. And you ready? Like to talk now? <laughs> okay, well, the first problem was the kitchen. This, this is it. There was one other, you can't see it under this window, there was one little cabinet there, and these were cabinet like that, and not the other end of it. That's it. And there was a table that you could eat at. Uh, and there was a refrigerator that was gas, and then less than. Uh, so we converted that room to a family because this was not going to work. You, you see, they put a pie pan up there, too. You know, <laughs> for a long time, we took the pie pan off. Okay. Uh, and Debbie, where is she? Hello. <laughs> Debbie did, uh, Debbie Nix, this is, did the, uh, the painting to the walls, and she, this is a, a kind of a wallpaper. She did finish on that, so we owe her for that. So, the kitchen, being as small as it was, was not going to work. So, we decided to have a kitchen added. So, this uh, was all excavated and everything. And uh, uh, unlike uh, Alex, who found gold uh, coins when he was looking around, we, we came up with bottles. <laughs> but we kept them. <coughs> So, when we uh, finished the kitchen, and uh, this, interestingly, well, that's the back, and this is obviously the round area. This area here we made into a patio. Before that time, it was a hill. And so the uh, kids could, you know, get their uh, sleds and s slide down the hill. That's how big the hill was. Sorry. Anyway, this uh, is a, our family room, and basically almost all the furniture in this house we brought with us. 
so not too much here. Uh, Larry did make this lamp. He was into doing uh, stainless. stainless glass for a little while here. Uh, and obviously this kitchen is a little much easier to store things in. Uh, this is, a, they call it an entry, this is a foyer. Uh, we did remove all of the uh, hot water heaters. They were just being so annoying. We did, as Larry mentioned, uh, we kept the floors in the second, third floor, but the boards were kind of had cracks, you know, between, so you could look down into the basement with <laughs> the cracks. And, you know, or you could sweep, you know, so you go down to the basement. <laughs> but I wasn't inclined to have whatever comes out of the basement up. <laughs> so we covered those with oak floors. Okay, this is an interesting issue here because, as Larry mentioned earlier, the people who were living there were having more trouble getting up and down the stairs. So they converted this dining room, which is our current dining room, into a bedroom at that time. And Larry's father, at that point, uh, suggested that they put a bathroom downstairs so that all these people who were older and couldn't get up downstairs would have a bathroom. So they put this in, which was kind of a block then to make the kitchen smaller. Because the kitchen, in order to get to the dining room, you had to go through here and then here and then you'd get to the dining room. So the dishes and all were in that area. And of course that was eliminated once the bathroom was put in. Uh, we weren't inclined to keep the bathroom next to the dining room, so we tore that down and we did put a power room, you know, so people could, wouldn't have to go upstairs, but they couldn't take any showers down there. Uh, this is what was called on the uh, blueprints, you have all the blueprints. Uh, they called this room a library. I don't know why, because I never saw a single book in there. <laughs> At that time, then the bedroom was moved, the dining room was moved from the now downstairs bedroom into this room. So at that point, the dining room was in the quote living room. Uh, this uh, this is the original fireplace. When I first saw it, I thought, I don't know about this room stuff there. But it turned out that it was slate, and they had done faux work on it with the green, which, I mean, you know, they did faux work back in, I don't know, whatever. But anyway, I decided to keep it. The chimney had been removed from the house, and the cost of putting a new chimney in was, you know, not there, so we don't use it, but we decorated it. Uh, so this is essentially the living room. Again, the furniture was what we already had in Dallas. Uh, we don't have our great artist here, you luck, but he did the ceiling and he did the uh, stripes here because he thought the room was too light. You know, I'm trusting him, he knows all about that. My sister-in-law always thought it was wallpaper. He actually had painted this. <coughs> uh, this room uh, was called a parlor. Uh, the interesting part here is that you know some of the stuff we, we had moved, you know, just it wasn't there all this time. But uh, up below, we were sitting in the chair watching the TV, and uh, he had a little, you know, heater that they could use. But he would, uh, you saw the plaster would be moving. So when the plaster would sort of fall from here, <coughs> you know, move over. <laughs> uh, the other interesting story about this, and I don't know if it's true, but uh, supposedly this piano is there, but supposedly Samuel Jordan, you know, the first guy that moved in, apparently, you know, they used to put your uh, coffin in your house in those days. So the story is that the coffin for him was on the top of that piano. <laughs> don't know if that's true, but no, it's, it's true. been the past down story. <laughs> Larry's brother is saying true. Uh, at any rate, we, 
uh, converted this room. We had a uh, partner's desk that we had in Texas chair, so we brought that up, uh, rug, and uh, then we hired you again. And you did the ceiling, you did all the green on the wall with all these little stripes. He did the um, encrusta here, which you've seen in the uh, Telford, only this much nicer with red and gold and all that. Mm -hmm. you know? so. And this lamp was uh, my mother's lamp. The pictures we decided would be people who had lived in this house. So all the people on this wall, on this wall, uh, who lived in the house, we had their pictures. Because of course, this wasn't the same family, right? So there was trunks and pictures and you know all this sort of stuff. And uh, Larry's brother Ron has old Bibles, those great big Bibles with, with the, you know all that scrolling and everything in there. So uh, yeah, but I, you know, I was like, well, you know, I live in this house and I have family, so I did take a little part of the wall on the other side, so I could put some family pictures up too. Now we're on the second floor. Well, this was the hallway, which gave me a little claustrophobia. <laughs> so we widened, uh, and that way I could put my some other furniture in already. <laughs> Well, what you have here now, this used to be a bedroom down here, and it had a sleeping porch you went out to, and a bathroom that were over there. And then this was a door to another bedroom, this was a door to a bedroom, and this that you can see is also a door to a bedroom. And this globe is the Similar to the one light globe we kept, it's not that one, but I got the last two I could ever find to put up here. So, we put the room that looked like this, with this was where the bathroom was, you couldn't <coughs> see it, but the part of the bedroom was over here. They did heat that with a pot belly stove, and uh, that was to the porch. Uh, we closed all that up and made this into a room where we can do work with our computers and uh, uh, Larry's uh, grandfather, Smith, this was his rocker, and that was always by his bed in the dining room. <laughs> <laughs> and then my grandmother actually did the work on that type of chair. Uh, so, this is another one of the bedrooms that was on the second floor. Uh, I think Jacqueline back there, where she slept in that room, so, <laughs> with her sister. Uh, we changed it into a uh, bathroom, obviously. And this is original furniture here. And, hello, Deb. <laughs> Two of her pictures are there. There's actually three in the dining room. We're going to, I mean, in the, in the bathroom, but we don't have that view. Okay, so this was the, uh, only the last bedroom. Uh, originally, um, it uh, was uh, Grandpa and Grandma Smith's. Uh, Uncle O had his own room, but he eventually moved into this one. Why? Because he's a, we loved him. We loved him. Yeah. Absolutely. But he's a bit of a miser, so he hung a curtain in the hallway so that you could stay, didn't care about that whole house of the house, you could, you know, be warmer, you know, that way. So, <laughs> at any rate, uh, you could tell that, you know, we got rid of the radiators, as I said, and of course we had to, we had, this is a queen size bed, so to fit it in there, you had to put it here, you couldn't put it in my queen size Okay, the interesting part of this one, though, are these two doors, okay, they were on the wall. Both of these were closets. Little closets. We still have this little closet. We have both doors, but I had a, an idea. I took this bedroom, which was next to the previous one, and put a wall in it. So we still had the door to the closet, but we now had a walk in closet, which happens to be. And then uh, the other half of the wall, I put the utility room. 
so that it's upstairs where it's much more convenient anyway because all the stuff's up there. But certainly didn't want it in the basement. The basement is not finished. <laughs> uh, this is out here, they used to call it a trunk room. One of Jacqueline's sisters slept in that room for a while. There was no heat or anything. I don't think there was any electricity in that room either. She was there for a while. Uh, we tore that all down and opened it up here. So this window is the same window, but we put a stairway up to the third floor here. And that chair was original. So a pretty ancient antique uh, chair, actually. Okay, now this was the bathroom on the second floor before there was any bathroom on the first floor, right? And uh, you could tell there's a you know, no shower, barely any towel racks. Uh, I'm not even sure how all these people lived in this house. <laughs> but uh, and this was a uh, marble sink. Well, I kind of, we kind of liked the two things, but you know, we didn't want them there. So we moved them up to the third floor. And uh, this is not an easy thing to move. <laughs> I don't think the contractors were too thrilled with that. <laughs> but the interesting piece was when they picked it up, it turned out that it only had three legs. And it was or had a rock under it on the other side. <laughs> which was holding it up from tipping in. <laughs> anyway, uh, we did get it up there. We did get a new leg made, so we had real legs. And Larry uh, painted it and did some stenciling, and we added a shower. You know. And this was still marble here. So uh, these there are two bedrooms right up here at the front, as you can see there. There's some leakage, you know, at some point in time here. Uh, and this was part of it. We got rid of that, kind of opened it up, and uh, made it into this bedroom. And again, this, all this furniture was exactly the same, same color, everything, even painted the wall the same, so I didn't have to buy any new blankets, covers, sheets, color cases. Uh, but Larry did make this lamp too, that was for his mother. Uh, and we got the trunks at the trunk room and we got those being finished. And this was like this. There was Apparently somebody started to do something up here, but it was never finished at all. The only thing we had up there were squirrels, rats, <laughs> uh, I don't know, I think there was even a snake up there. Uh, but at any rate, that was completely like that. And then we made it into a new room and put another door. And then again, all that furniture uh, came from Texas, so I had to buy anything new there. And that, my dad made for me. It was my little chest of toys. Now the balusters. There was a lot of complaints about loss of the balusters <laughs> all over. Uh, well, interestingly, now remember the dining room was really now a bedroom, and the dining room was over in the quote living room area. And Uncle O kept all the balusters piled along the dining room table. <laughs> And, you know, with a little glue, they all were good. So we're back. <laughs> Ta da We're finished. <laughs>
64 months. That's, that's over five years from the beginning to the end. And we did have a couple of hiccups along the way. This is when it was supposed to end. You know, the, we had an 18 month construction time. Um, but we weren't quite there. We weren't even quite halfway. But, um, you know, we, had, we liked our contractor. There were changes. There were things that changed in the construction. You know, he, he was due a little more time, so we worked with him. We loved his um, skill. I mean, he did a great job. Very meticulous. That's part of the reason it took so long. That was one day, though. Oh, a year or so later, um, contract went belly up. <laughs> he was gone. So I got to play contractor the last five months, contractor and labor, and, and finished the house so we could move in the six, in 64 months. But it was a, you know, it was a long time. How's that compared to the original construction? <laughs> they finished the process in 18 months. <laughs> Times as long as they did, they didn't have power tools, right? <laughs> uh, something, something is wrong. But you know, we got done. We moved in. I think it was March, um, March of 2008. The house had, was vacant for five years before we moved in. Sue became occupant number 20 to move in the same family. So after nearly 120 years, five generations, 20 family members have called 110 South Clinton home. This is kind of the, the um, family tree, those that lived in the house. So, you know, I know my brother lived there for a short time, the shortest time. We gave him credit for being an occupant. <laughs> and they lived there you know, a few years. Um, Jacqueline's here. She's the fifth generation. Pretty much, uh, well, actually, everybody in the fourth generation is here. So we've got four, five, six, five people. That's 20, you know, 25 percent of the, all the family members are right here today. <laughs> so that is the end. And we missed the last slide, but. Didn't expect this many people. Thank you. Questions? Question, David. Sue, I hear there's an elevator in your house. Where is the elevator? Where Where did that go? We kind of decided to leave that one out, but uh, I, I do realize some people know it's there. Uh, one of my loves growing up was, I actually looked at house plans all the time. I don't know why I drew them, I looked at them, da da da. So when I was, we were still in Texas, and uh, I had the blueprints, something came to me. People were dying in the dining room. <laughs> I don't want to die in the dining room. <laughs> so I decided I had to be able to get out of the dining room <laughs> as soon as possible. So it just so happened that there was a steps that went down to the basement that came out of the kitchen. The kitchen also had steps that went up to the second floor in one of those, you know, windy. Mm -hmm. And then once you got to the second floor, there was another doorway to go up to the third floor. a shaft there. <laughs> and so I decided to uh, see if we could put an elevator in. Now Larry thought I was out to lunch, but <laughs> anyway, uh, so using the <coughs> elevator, you know, because then I was in Texas still talking to my friends and they were giving me all these things like, well, you could die, you know, uh, choke on a chicken breast or something in the dining room, or I could, uh, uh, I came up with all these different reasons why it didn't make any sense, but anyway, we did put the elevator in. It's a little, you know, iffy at times, but it's convenient. Uh, Larry, who thought I was out to lunch, had to have surgery a few uh, years ago, and at which point he needed to use a walker. 
And uh, of course, uh, we had retained all of that. So we have walkers, we have toilet seat rays, we have you know these things that are, are stored up in the attic. So uh, when he couldn't go up and down the steps for one week. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He didn't have to sleep in the dining room. Exactly. We got one week's work done. We elevator. So the elevator became a little more of success. Right. But at any rate, it's convenient. You know, you can uh, put stuff in there and send it up. You know, and put it away in the attic. So, so you have so another entrance to the third floor. Like, yeah, it goes yes. it goes from the basement yes. all the way to the no, third floor. The elevator goes because they were it was already a shaft essentially because of the way the steps were there. So anyway, that's it. <laughs> that is it. A burning question. The elevator. When the house was built in early four, did it have electricity? I think they had electricity you know, for. There was so, very limited, um, a lot of places, and you know, uh, Larry's sister is going to talk about this, but the electrical wires were, there were some outlets added in there, but do you know what I'm talking about? There would be this um, y, um, not metal, not there would be metal not and, and not with the wire, I don't know what it's called, but there would be metal pieces along the floor. Exterior, I mean, not yeah. in the. So there were there was some more electricity, and like I mentioned, guess. Uncle O yeah. would plug into the light yeah. fixture. Yeah. You know, so the cord was yeah. coming yeah. down yeah. in the light yeah. fixture. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I don't think, but so obviously there wasn't a lot of electricity in there, and then we added it. Electricity. Oh. Was there only running wire? Or any signs of it now. Yeah, as far as I, as I know, there was rust water. And Mark uh, helped me with the exterior coloring, you know. He brought over things and suggested this and that, and we went with that. It's still the same color. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm probably saying that color forever now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> my, my mother grew up in uh, Oily, South Lincoln. And apparently her and Orville were buddies. And this was pre Facebook or Instagram. <laughs> so somebody strung up a clothesline between their bedroom windows. And yeah. they changed, switched notes back and forth. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the cooks, Jimmy and Linda Cook, live next door where the McNally's are for a while. They, they bought it after my parents okay. sold. And, and, and Jimmy has told me they used to string out, Orville and him used to have, you know, those. Phones were not put out a can again. Yeah. Each end is stringing well, between. This may have been, to, yeah, this may have been left over from yeah, my mother. Yeah, we used to talk between, between houses. Yeah. 